Hey guys, welcome back to the homestead. Today, Angel's at work. I got the boys. Hope they don't kill each other. Let's get some work done. So I just measured the first piece of drywall for the kitchen, and that's what's going to go right here at the window. I checked out the studs of the kitchen, and they don't line up perfectly where I can start in that corner, or I can start right here where we're going to end the drywall. So I picked the best starting point, and that's this sheet right here that covers the window. It'll allow me to go to the left and line up on my studs correctly and go to the right and cut the piece to fit as well. I got my measurements, let's go on outside and let's cut some drywall. Can you come here again? I need your help again. You did so good the first time, you won the bonus round. Alright, just push right here and hold this for fall over. Quite the colors on screen here. Red, green, and purple, and a little bit of brown, and uh, no apples in baskets. All right, well, I just about royally messed up. Elijah's just now bringing the bag in from outside, and let me show you something that I forgot to do that I hope I can still do. That's right, an outlet box. It needs to go right here, right at the bottom of the screen. This little guy but I got the ones that attach to the wall studs. There's drywall on the wall stud. I'm gonna see if I can finagle it behind the drywall in place and nail it. Actually, I'll probably screw it. I got more control of the screws. So anyway, let's go do that real quick. Let's fix what I just about really messed up. All right, I measured the other outlet in the kitchen and it's 46 inches from the subfloor to the top of the box. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that here pencil will work okay 
Here's a closer look at the outlet box that I got. I really wanted something strong and really stiff, so I spent a little bit more and got this kind. It comes with a flange that you mount on the front face of the stud, and it spaces it out correctly. It takes away a lot of guesswork um, compared to the normal nail in the stud type, and I was hoping this would give me better control. So, just pulling the other one down out of the way for a second. With this here, I need to mark my insulation next to cut some of it away. I'm making it a little bit smaller than my pencil line. I'm going to slice it, but I'm not pulling it out. I'm going to let it go behind the outlet. It'll compress it a little bit, but I'm okay with that rather than taking it out, especially with how drafty this house is. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pop out my knockout tab here with my impact drill. Totally the wrong tool for the job, but it's what was right beside me. I'm only going to punch one out because there's only two wires coming in. So that looks good. Now here's the moment of truth that I can fish this behind the drywall but in front of the vapor barrier from the other insulation. I'm going to use my 7001 way tool. Love this thing by the way. Thank you again to, I believe it was Mary that sent it to us. Dropped it on the floor there, that's a good check. I'm gonna see if I can kind of wedge a little bit in the drywall to give me some, some wiggle room. All right, we'll try this. Again, this is a big mess up on my part. Hopefully I'll have room to put the screws through this box too. Bump it up to my height. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, so the screws I'm going to use are the same ones I used on the window. They're one and five eighths inch long, exterior grade pan head torque screws rated for awesomeness so we're gonna have some awesomeness right here here we go thank goodness I was able to retrofit that in there Not a little bit sloppy what's going on all right I'm gonna hmm I'm a little disappointed in that, tell you that much. Tell you that much right there, disappointment is high. Oh, uh, well, okay, I see what's going to happen. I mean, it's got little tabs here, so the drywall will probably hold it in place really good. Yeah, that'd be fun. Uh, so I'm going to take a second and tell you about the drywall that I chose while I'm stapling it on. It is purple. And this drywall is rated for wet environments. You're supposed to use... Um, the treated drywall in bathrooms and kitchens or anywhere where it might be exposed to higher levels of humidity or moisture We put this in our bathroom in our bedroom, which has already been renovated I'm putting this all in the kitchen any drywall that I replace will have this I'll probably actually use this anywhere in this house just because the way The mobile home is and everything Two dollars per sheet is cheap insurance to prevent mold and moisture and have a resistant product Well worth it in my case I'm not wanting to tell you what's code, but I'm pretty sure this is modern building codes is to use this in kitchens and baths as well, I think. But I'm not sure 100%, so I'm not going to tell you 100%. Okay, next step to do is to kill the power, take this outlet out, and fish the new wires into this box while I'm here. Because this 
section of the wall will be the next piece that I cut. Here's a little trick, especially if you're working with yourself, <laughs> working by yourself. If you don't know or can't see the outlet you're turning off, plug something into it and listen for that device to turn off. That way you know the power's off. Another option would be to use an electrical tester. I have one of those, just not up here. Get my drill. We don't have time to wait for this. Now what I'm doing here, you don't want to do if you want to save your outlet. I'm zipping the screws all the way out. That breaks the outlet. You can't put them back in when you're done. But I'm replacing these with GFCI outlets, so I don't care. Doing it the fast way. There, finally. Finally. All right, for now, temporarily, so I can turn the power back on, have another light back in here, and more importantly, have my box fan on. I'm gonna put wire nuts on this to complete the circuit on through this box and down the line. This is temporary. I'm gonna also stuff this these wires back in the box. That way I can put the drywall in this section of the wall next, a lot easier too. There is a wire staple holding these wires next to the stud about, what is that, seven inches down from this box. So I'm not gonna put another staple because I want to use, or I want to leave as much length of these wires as possible for any future repairs. If I was to staple it here, it's gonna make it really hard to fish the extra wires through the box in a little while when I put the outlet in. Go ahead and cover that up. I'll forget, staple on a vapor barrier. All right, let's turn the breaker back on, get our fan going, and rock and roll with some more drywall. Well, thank goodness that's done because I got the box fan back on. All the windows are open, the fan's going. It's the last week of October, but it's like mid 70s outside. I'm not complaining. It's just toasty for a big guy. Well, before I forget and repeat that mistake, I'm gonna go ahead and put the boxes in for the rest of the outlets on this part of the kitchen wall as well. All right, so this is going to have a couple of different punch outs. We've got quite the mess of wires coming in from the top. And I've got to pull new wires that I ran across the floor in one of our other videos up and over and into this box as well. So I'm going to go ahead and punch out one would be enough on the top for that. I'm going to punch out one on the bottom as well. If I have to, I can always punch out more wires from within the box when it's already installed. It's just not as easy as doing it right now. It's kind of a weird box design how it comes out this way, but it makes sense because the drywall will pull it back.
Looking good, Leroy. All right, guys, last but certainly not least is this outlet down here that's going to be for the dishwasher. A couple of you answered my question, and thank you so much, about how to wire in our dishwasher. And the answer is just put a GFCI outlet at least 18 inches above the finished floor height and plug it in. Thank you. All good. All right, guys, as is kind of usual for how I go when I work, I've lost track of time and I've missed lunchtime for the boys. It's pretty late. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop here, take care of them, get some lunch, and we'll probably pick this back up this evening. But whenever we pick it up next, you'll see it here in about two seconds. I think that's a little optimistic for me. Hey, all right, no. Nope. Well, that ain't perfect. Good enough for state work. Need that inside. All right, for this outlet, I'm going to use a little bit of thing called relative dimensioning. I'm looking for my shim first. I'm supposed to space the drywall up off the floor about a quarter inch or so. Here, there we go. Shim. Floor. All right, so from here, I'm just going to use my box that's already in place and go ahead and mark my cut lines as best I can. With that done, then what I can do is get some measurements and transfer it to here. This is I'm no good at doing this. I'm really not that good. So I'm, I'm trying the best I can. There we go. Finally. That worked out pretty good. Nice. Well, got that piece done. It went in really good and I am really happy. I got lucky. I'm not a professional drywaller by any means. Well guys, Angel just got home from work, so I'm gonna go ahead and call it a day. But before I end out this video, I'll take you on outside and give you a little bit of a sheep clip time. If you wanna see some sheep, we've got to do the waterer and give them some more hay. So let's go on out there and we'll finish the video there. Well, the only problem with having a seven-year-old do your water fill is apparently he likes to wash the hay a little bit too. Gonna have to fuss at him about it. We'll have to dock his pay. All right, let me go ahead and get this bell out because it it's the one he sprayed. I don't want it to get moldy. Ah, there's the dick chair. Come here. 
Oh, hello sheep. I think there are a few sheep that are excited to get some hay. 